Welcome to Wisdom of the World. Today I'm going to tell a story about fairness, and it's a story from Burma, but it's called Mao Myanmar. And it's called Three Women and One Man. And it goes like this. Once upon a time, there was a father and a mother who had one son. The boy was a very good looking boy, nice boy, intelligent boy. And um, he came from a fairly wealthy family and his life would have been, you know, okay, normal, if you wish, if he hadn't been terribly afraid of snakes. Even, even a tiny little snake he was afraid of. And at night he always dreamt that he was chased by a cobra or a viper and they always caught him in his dream and they bit him. His parents thought that maybe marriage would help him but it didn't really. He always complained to his wife and said that one day he would be uh, bitten by a snake and she would find him dead. And he had only one mistress wish that please don't cremate me but put me on a, a raft, you know, a, a, a raft and then float me down the river. So one day, indeed, his wife uh, heard an incredible, terrible scream and she found him laying motionless in the grass and she saw a venomous viper slipping away. And so she, uh, she figured he was dead and she called a carpenter to at least honor her, um, her dead husband's uh, last wishes. And so um, with a lot of tears and crying, the husband was put onto the river on a raft and was floated down the river. So he floated down the river and a little downstream, uh, a snake shaman lived uh, with his three daughters and those daughters were swimming at that very moment and the oldest daughter actually spotted uh, the raft and they said, hey, here's a raft with a corpse on it. And um, the middle sister uh, pulled with all her might, pulled that raft from the river uh, um, to the side of the river and the third, the youngest sister, went to call her father. So the father inspected the corpse and saw the snake bite and said to uh, his daughters, this man is not dead, I can revive him. So they drug him out of, uh, into the hut of the snake charmer and he, he sucked out the, the bite of the snake and he put some herbs on it. And sure enough, the man slowly came back alive. And then after a while, he was just fine. And it happened that all the three daughters, just in one go, fell in love with the same man. Now, the oldest said, I'm the one who spotted him, so I should be the one who gets to marry him. And the second one said, well, if it wasn't for me just actually pulling him along, um, he, you know, we would have never gotten him, so I'm the one uh, that um, should be able to marry him. And the youngest daughter said, no, that's nonsense. If it wasn't for me, um, he would have never, um, you know, I called our father and he would have never been, you know, healed and cured. And he argued and he argued and he argued. And then finally, the older sister said, stop the arguing. There's loads of other guys around here in our area. Just let him go. The middle sister agreed with that, but the younger sister said, no, if we, none of us can marry him, then no one can marry him. And she, she slipped sort of a magical yellow ribbon onto his ankle and the man just at once turned into a parrot, a beautiful parrot, and he flew away. Now, as a parrot, he was looking for, for food and he chanced upon the king's garden, which, which had lots of beautiful flowers in it. And he was picking those flowers. The gardener was furious and, and tried to throw stones at him, but wasn't very good at that. 
but eventually actually sort of trapped him, brought him to the king and uh, asked uh, the king's permission to kill this bird. But the king liked this beautiful bird and says, just give me a beautiful golden cage. And he presented the beautiful parrot in the cage as a present to his daughter. Now, his daughter was um, extremely bored, always in her lavish tower where she lived. And um, she loved this parrot. She taught him, taught him some tricks so he would come, you know, on her hand, sit on her hand and she taught him a few words. And so she spent a lot of time with him and she liked it. And then she saw this little yellow ribbon on his foot. And then she just was curious about it and untied it. And at that same moment, the parrot transformed in the handsome young man that he was before. Now, this guy, him and the princess, also fell in love right away. And so they had, let's say, a month-long love affair. And uh, finally, the, the chambermaids got a bit curious and they looked through the keyhole and they saw a man in the princess's chamber. And they were so surprised and their cries of surprise uh, echoed through the palace walls and the, the guards who were always there um, sprang into action and they were ready to kill an intruder. So they came into the princess's bedroom and she had already tied the ribbon again to the man's uh, ankle and he, he was a bird. So they only found the princess and the bird, but the bird was quite agitated. Uh, and he was also afraid of all the, the soldiers that were getting in. So he, with loud shrieks, he, he got away and he, he flew through the window. Now, all that would have been fine if it hadn't uh, be the, if it weren't a case that the little yellow ribbon that he had under his ankle got caught on the window. And so he became, while he was flying out, he became a young man again and he fell down the bushes and somehow um, landed and still lived. And he opened his eyes and he, he heard and he saw the, the soldiers approaching from below to catch him. And he jumped and he leapt up and he ran away as fast as he could. Now he was a quite a good run. He could run quite fast, but uh, the, the pursuers, the soldiers were, you know, they were unrelenting. They just slowly were catching up at, uh, uh, with him as he was losing his energy. And as he was running and running, he, he was looking for a place to hide. And he saw a villa a little further on and he went into that villa and he, oh, he burst in there, he opened the door and he said, uh, you have to help me. Uh, the king's soldiers are after me, but I have done nothing wrong. Now, the merchant knew the king wasn't always right. So he said to the, to the young man, he says, don't worry, just sit down at our table and just, you know, eat with her and pretend to be part of our family. So just a little later, the soldiers came in and they said, we are looking for somebody. You must have, he's gone into this house. You must have seen him. And the merchant said, no, we have not seen anything. But please, uh, you're welcome to look at our house uh, everywhere and just let uh, my wife, my daughter and my son-in-law and myself finish our dinner in peace. So the soldiers hadn't seen his face, so they didn't recognize him. So they looked everywhere, couldn't find him, finally apologized to the merchants and left, looking elsewhere for him. The daughter and the young man also loved each other. And the daughter so much wanted to marry him, asked her parents to, 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 you know, for their approval. And they, she was their only daughter, so they were inclined to say yes. And the, the young man did not object. So a couple of days later, they were married. In the meantime, the princess was uh, not eating, uh, not speaking, not drinking, and she became very ill. 
none of the doctors which the king summoned could heal her. They didn't know what was the matter with her. And then finally the king spoke to her alone and says, my daughter, you're, you're the most precious uh, uh, thing that I have for me. You're everything. Is there anything I can do for you? And then the princess broke down and told her father uh, the whole story. The king knew just what to do. And he, he asked the royal theater to put up a performance. And he invited all the leading families and nobles and told that anybody who doesn't come will face a severe punishment. So the theater performance was on and the princess went through all the aisles and it didn't take very long before she found uh, her lover and his new bride. And uh, the princess said to the bride, you stole my man. And the bride said, well, I think he left you. And at that same moment, there was the other woman, the first wife, and says, that is my dead husband. I thought he was dead. He belongs to me. And so these three women were all arguing about who was uh, the rightful wife to this man. Now, the, um, the discussions went on and on and they became quite loud and wild and the king called upon the highest judge in the country to take on the case. The case. So the judge listened carefully to everybody and considered the matter and then gave his decision. He said, the first wife thought the husband was dead and then sent him away, gave him to the river, and at that moment her marriage stopped being valid. The second one, the princess, uh, yes, she lifted the curse uh, for him, and they had a month-long sort of marriage-like relationship, but she did not protect him uh, against uh, uh, the soldiers of her father who were out to kill him, capture him and kill him. So... She also has no claim. But the third wife actually gave him sanctuary and protected him against the, the soldiers that were out to capture him. And so because she gave him refuge and sanctuary, she is his rightful wife. Fair not fair you may decide i think that's a fair decision and fairness in our world when there is peace i guess fairness rules thank you